Good morning. Today is May 26th, 2021. I'm Stephen Wynn with Healing the Heart of America, brought to you through the I Am Heart Meditation Studio. So, good morning all. This is, we're coming to the end of our class here. It ends on Friday. So the first week we went through the dimensions of the heart. And then we, the second week we went through the five elements. And then we've been going through the chakras. And today, I mean, we finished with the crown yesterday, but I'd like to circle back to the connection between the third chakra, the solar plexus and the third eye. And there's a very specific reason for doing that today. And I'm also going to pull in the root chakra. The reason I'm, I'm, I'm going with all this today is that this morning we had this extraordinary full lunar eclipse at about 7 a.m. Eastern time, 7.15 Eastern time. And this is not about astrology because uh, I'm not qualified to talk about astrology. But this is about the rhythms of life, the rhythms of nature. And we just went through an experience of a vast amount of light being blocked on the earth. So we're going to explore that in terms of the solar plexus, the sun within us, the root chakra, the earth within us. And it's not so well known, but the third eye actually ties into the moon. If you think about it for a second, the fire in the solar plexus is hot and light, but the light in the third eye is always cool. You'll just explore that, you'll find that. If, it's, if it does shift to be hot, it's, it's a distortion. So, we're just going to just be exploring and seeing what, uh, what comes out of that in terms of our own inner light. And we're going to take that darkness as an open doorway to move into our own inverted infinite space. So that's what we're doing this morning. So let's just get started by uh, sitting up straight, allowing the spine to be fully elongated. Whatever you do to allow yourself to, uh, to move into an elongated position. And have our feet flat on the floor. And let's just start by connecting with our hearts by putting our hands over our heart. And let's just invite the deep wisdom of our hearts to guide this exploration of our inner energies, the rhythms and cycles of life as they are reflected in the outer realms. The more we move into harmony within, the more the outer realms become harmonious and vice versa. Just check, maybe you notice some shift by putting your hands in your heart. Maybe you notice 
the vibrations of your heartbeat to your fingers or palms. Whatever shows up is perfect. When you're ready, let's just let that down, lay hands down. Begin this process of noticing our breath. All we're doing is watching the breath. How full is it? How free? How smooth is the breath? Which nostril is more dominant? Could you allow yourself to experience some gratitude to your breath? We have our hearts, we have our minds. It's the breath located between the hearts and the minds that we use to integrate the heart and mind, to bring them together so they function as one rather than against each other. And the breath does this for us. Now let's shift into the full breath, intentionally claiming the process of breathing, making it conscious. Full exhale, pulling the abdominal muscles all the way back towards the spine. Let it go, smooth, smooth inhale in, smooth exhale out. And let's take a moment now, now that we're settled, to invite any of the spiritual teachers in our lives to be with us now. From any tradition, what could be, Some of us are actually connected to the animal kingdom. I've had people who are 
connected to whales, to elephants, to horses. It could be a force of nature, like a mountain. Whatever it is, more often it's a spiritual teacher or teachers. Just welcome them here to be with us. That we might express their wisdom, their love, their power to all that we meet in our lives. Toward the one, the perfection of love, harmony, beauty, the only being, united with all the illuminated souls who form the embodiment of the one heart, the spirit of guidance. I see these divine qualities of the heart as great teachers, love, harmony, beauty, spirit of guidance. May we all be blessed by their presence. Now let's move into our heart rhythm meditation, connecting the rhythm of our heartbeat with the rhythm of our breath. Still keeping that full breath, uses eight heartbeats in, eight heartbeats out, whatever number is right for you. And just begin to notice what happens to you as you move into this rhythm between your breath and your heartbeat. Feel your pulse if you can't feel your heartbeat or simply count, it's fine. Let's shift into the directed breathing. We pull the energy and the inhale directly into the heart. With every breath, there's always a stream of air and there's a stream of energy. Let the air go in through the nose into the lungs, filling it up. We separate the energy let it go directly in and out of the heart. We pull energy in from all of creation into our heart. Fill up the heart on the exhale. Send that same energy out, slightly qualified, slightly stamped with the energy of our own heart. And in this way, we exchange wisdom and power with creation. We download information and wisdom and we upload. to the collective, our own wisdom. Now 
I'm going to invite you to shift into the fire breath, which means inhaling through slightly open lips into the solar plexus, that same directed breath, but now dropping in a few inches lower below the heart, solar plexus at the base of the rib cage. Inhaling through slightly open lips, Fill up that solar plexus with the, sort of like fanning the fire of the sun within us. Hold the breath just as long as it's comfortable. And then separate the light from the heat. Let the light rise up into your heart and exhale out through your nostrils. And again, inhale with the fire breath through open lips into the solar plexus, all the way back toward the spine. Hold the breath, letting the heat build up. Perhaps you get a sense of that blazing reddish orange bed of coals right where the solar plexus is. And exhale, the light moves up into your heart and exhale out through your nostrils. And the light goes back out. Just keep on doing this fire breath for a minute or two. See if you can gently and easily move that into a square breath, but never struggling. If you need to breathe, you just breathe. And now I'm going to suggest a slight variation of this. And that is on the inhale, get an image of the sun or a sense of the sun and inhale directly from the sun into your solar plexus. The sun outside is connected to the solar plexus, the sun inside. And again, hold it just like before. The light rise up into your heart. And when we exhale, exhale into the sun again. The light goes back. Just continue with that pattern with that variation here.
And let's shift it again. Same way, inhale through slightly open lips with the fire breath into the solar plexus. Hold it. This time, instead of exhaling from your heart out, I want you to let the light go all the way up to your third eye and let it go out of your eyes, your third eye, back to the sun. And just let that breathing pattern go and come back to basic heart rhythm meditation. And now let's move into energizing our root chakra. You always want to be balanced and rooted to the earth. So with the earth breath, in and out through the nose, inhale into your heart and down to your root chakra. And then just come back up, exhaling through your nose, up through the heart and out again. Inhaling through the nose, through the heart, down to the root chakra. And then exhaling up and out through the heart. And as you breathe in and out of your root chakra, I invite you just to notice that there is a wave, a sine wave of the Earth's energy. And it's possible for us to resonate with it. This is not something to struggle with your mind to see and experience. It's just an imitation. To start to become aware of what science already tells us. There's a wave of the Earth's energy. I read some research once saying it was something like 7.2 cycles per second. I'm, don't quote me on that one. But it's really been measured. And it's not that we want to be trying to count the Earth waves or anything like that. Let's just check to see if you get a felt sense of the wave-like intelligence of the Earth. Um, the Earth permeates our system, permeates our world, this vibration.
But as the earth rotates around the sun, technically they rotate around each other. Practically, we experience it as the earth rotating around the sun. You have the wave energy of the earth and the wave energy of the sun. One is dense, one is light and fire. One is dense. And the two function in harmony as they dance. You think of two dancers, whatever kind of dance they're doing. That's the earth and the sun dancing in this rhythm of the universe. And now let's do another pattern, classically a famous pattern out of India connecting the root chakra up through the spine, through the medulla oblongata and directly to the third eye. I'm gonna suggest the air breath here. Inhale through the third eye, down the spine, down, down through the heart, through the throat, to the heart, to the root chakra, and then exhaling, following it all the way back up. It is not so well known the third eye is connected to the moon. And in fact, there is a, just like there's a hidden heart chakra, there is a soma center there in the third eye. The moon is soma. And the invitation is to connect the earth energy that same sense of vibration, whether we notice it or not, doesn't matter. We just know from science that the moon has its own vibration, the earth does, the sun does. We're just open to the possibility of moving into alignment with this rhythm of the dance between the earth and the moon. as the moon rotates around the earth. Could we allow the moon and the earth to be in perfect harmony? And let's let this breathing pattern go and move back into basic heart rhythm meditation for a moment. And now let's build on 
the connection between, the resonance between the third eye and the solar plexus. It's taught quite often in, in I am heart. It's the fire of the sun below. It's the light above. So what we want to do is just inhale into the solar plexus. Pull the energy up into the third eye and exhale down into the solar plexus and out again. Inhale. You could use the fire breath if you want, or just nose breathing, either way is fine. We just want to enliven this connection. And the degree to which you can experience the energy running back and forth is totally an individual experience. If it's easy to experience, wonderful. If not, it's okay. All we do is we set the intention. You can lead with the imagination. Eventually, by looking in, inward as we do this, you will begin to notice this energy. Inhaling into the solar plexus up to the third eye. Exhaling down down to the solar plexus and out. And let's just check the level of intention. Is it okay with us that the energy of the earth, the energy of the sun, the energy of the moon, are all in harmony within us. Just say yes to that. You're just setting an intention. It's okay that what goes on in the universe, the rhythm of life of nature, is mirrored within us, the exact same rhythms, the exact same balance, the exact same harmony. And so we just had this lunar eclipse this morning. And I'll just say, I read some descriptions of what it means. It made no sense to me whatsoever. Would it be okay with us if we let go of asking our minds to understand it? And instead, invite the deep wisdom of our hearts to process this event, this time where the earth was much darker, did not have the full moon shining the light of the sun on half the planet. 
for a number of minutes. Who knows what that means? It's okay if we don't know. Would we allow the wisdom of our heart to process events like this? And if it's ever useful, to let the wisdom of our heart reveal it to us. So just a few questions as we work with this balance within us and the balance within nature. Where have you found struggles in your life? Over the course of your life, what patterns have showed up over and over again? Right now, we're in a very balanced state, rooted in the earth, powerful sun energy creating order, rhythm, clarity of the third eye, and the softness of the moonlight. Could you just take a look at your life, maybe your current life, maybe in the past, where have struggles showed up for you? And from this place of balance, how dominant are these struggles? How powerful, how strong are they? Would it be okay with you to greet these struggles from this place of balance, this place of rhythm, sun, moon, earth, fully embodied with these energies. How significant are these struggles right now to you? Would it be okay with you to greet them from this balance within yourself right now. Could you just greet them from rhythm, just check in your memories. Can you see that when these struggles showed up, we were greeting them not from balance and rhythm, but from being out of balance. And when we're out of balance, these struggles seem vast and problematic. When we are in balance, They are so manageable. We are so resourceful. In fact, let's ask that question. Where in your life, when you look through your life in the past or you look right now, where has support showed up for you? In what form has support showed up for you? Where have you been resourceful? What resources do you have? What resources have you used in the past? Could you just from this place of balance 
this very quiet place, sort of just take an inventory. Where did support show up? Who or what was the source of that support? What resources showed up? Would it be okay with you for whatever struggles and challenges you're facing now in your life? The support showed up. And I'll just say, could we allow it to show up from the earth energy? The fire energy, the sun, the moon. Could we allow a universal support to show up? Could we allow it to show up from the vast field of illuminated beings guiding our life, guiding the evolution of creation? And here's another question. When you sort of scan through your life and through your body, where has your experience been murky? Where has it been dark? And let's just, just take a moment with that. Where in your body is your body dark and murky? Which chakras are dark? Which centers? What parts of your bodies? What joints? Would it be okay with you if the light of the sun and the light of the moon filled wherever it is murky within your body? Is that okay with you? Could you just allow that, that which is dark, to become illuminated within yourself? What about in your world, in your life experience? What seemed to come totally unexpected out of the blue? And have we been shocked or surprised because we could not see it coming? That's another aspect of murkiness. It means there's a part of life we are not aware of in the dark. Would it be okay with us to move into such alignment with the sun and the moon and the earth that we become cognizant of the cycles of life, the rhythm of life, and can sense what will be showing up in our world. Maybe very clearly or maybe just a sense and be prepared and resourceful to greet whatever shows up in our life. Keep on with basic heart rhythm meditation.
Maybe keep connecting if you want to with the third eye and the solar plexus. It's very healing. With this light of the sun, this light of the moon, the stability of the earth, what is now opening up to you as possible potential in your life? What could be there? What could you welcome? What could you allow to show up in your life? So the feeling of, oh, that'd be nice if this happens. Not a sense of desperation, of neediness, of demanding. From this balanced rhythm place where we are, it would be nice if this showed up in my life. It would be nice if this opened up in my world, maybe in my body. And it's just a question, it's just an invitation to be open to receiving. And here's another question. What's in the way of that showing up in your life? What inner healing do we need to allow that to show up in our lives? Which dimensions need to be developed and strengthened in our heart? Which elements need to be strengthened, enlivened? Which centers and what patterns can we invite? What wounds can we invite to show up, to be healed? And all of this is on a personal level so far. But could we expand this out and look at our families, our communities, our states, our countries? Where have there been struggles? Where has there been support? I'm thinking here of America. When have we been that support? What issues seem murky to us now? I get a big hit on racism here of all the minorities. I get great murkiness in terms of our political divide, our view on the direction of the country. I get murkiness in terms of America stepping in to fulfill its dharma. And could we look at whether you're looking at your family, your community, or I'll, I'll speak in terms of the country. Can we look at America, the heart of America, and see what potential is there? What America can become? What your family can become? What your city can become? What the world can become? 
What potential is there? And there is a lot of energy with that. Would it be okay with us? America stepped into its full potential. This very creative country creating its own self-governed democratic republic. Could we draw on this great well of creativity, this great support of the divine beings to allow America to step forward, resonate and shining like the sun to its complete fullest potential. Whatever that picture is for you, And can we allow the healing of these divisive energies to allow this potential to show up? Can we allow that healing every, even more? However that happens, we just say yes. On the level of intention, we allow this great division in America to be resolved. We allow America to step into its utter full potential, being a guiding light of love, harmony, beauty for the world. Let's just let that image go as we sink back into our hearts. We have invited the forces of the divine to fulfill that image, that desire. And all we do is we sit in our hearts and enjoy the process of that unfolding. and enjoy it ever more, even more. So I check in again with your heartbeat. Maybe just dance up to your third eye, to your solar plexus, to your root chakra. Could you allow yourself to be grateful for this reflection of that which is within to that which is without, that which is without to that which is within. You know, Jesus talks about it. He says, what you loose in heaven will be loosed on earth. When we allow this vision, both for ourselves and for our country, to move into the heavenly realms. It is loosed, loosened within ourselves that we might step into our own divine status, radiant spiritual sun, moon, and earth, walking on the earth, fully rooted, fully grounded. So just pull on that picture of yourself, feel the energy in your feet, and just walk through your day, rest of your day. Who do you meet? What kind of work do you do? What do you eat with? Who do you hang out with? Could you greet them as a being living in perfect rhythm, perfect harmony? and bring them this blessing. Just let that go. Allow the meditation to come to a close.
Take your time when you're ready. Take a minute or two when your eyes, when you're ready. So, well, we have a full circle waiting on deck to uh, to join us here. Welcome and thank you so much. So I saw Brindy and then Bobby and then Ann. So Brindy, could we hear from you? And if people have to leave, we understand it's okay. Good morning, Brindy. You're unmuted, Brindy. So is something not not connecting properly. Can you hear me? Now I can hear you. There okay, you go. Good, good. Uh, I had quite an experience in the middle of that meditation. Um, <laughs> I uh, had an old injury happened over probably twelve years ago, um, where a dog bit my hand, and suddenly right in the area where it bit me I felt like like a kind of a healing sensation in my hand and then all of a sudden that it was in my left hand my hand started shaking I put it palms up on my leg and it it just shook I mean really hard for quite a long time uncontrollably Nice. And nice. Yeah, I, I, it kind of freaked me out. <laughs> so, Brendy. Yes. What happens is that as we move into rhythm, anything that is out of rhythm gets pulled up to be released. Okay. Okay. So that's. That's a perfect example of that happening right there. How is your hand right now? Is it still shaking or is it okay now? It's not shaking now. It's just just a little bit, but not like it was. Yeah. So this is stored up energy that is just moving out. And what you'll find is your hand will work better. And more than that, you know, our hands, what happens is we have all this energy in our heart, you know, the center point of our energetic being. And that energy tends to go out through our arms into our hands. And the work we perform with our hands becomes a labor of love. So this is a really exciting thing to hear this because it means that through your hands, where you once had this wound that was blocking flow is that you can express love. And that will not just go through your hands, it'll also go through your voice. Okay? Wow. Yeah. That's cool. Could you just give yourself some love and approval for the deep work that you've done? Yes. Yeah. Is it okay with you if you continue doing work that heals? Yes. Yes. Is it okay with you if you become someone living in harmony? Yes. Yes. Is it okay if that harmony permeates your work? Yes. Yes. Permeates your body? Yes. Yeah. I know they're obvious questions, but every time you say yes there, you're setting an intention. Is that okay with you? Yes. Yeah. Do you need to go anywhere anywhere more with this or are you pretty much in a peaceful place? Yeah. 
I just feel a bit shaky. Uh, okay, good. Let's work with that then. Could you allow yourself to be with that shakiness? Yes. Yeah. And so notice that inside your body or what in your field, there's just this shaky sort of residual energy here. Right? Yes. And do you like that energy? Oh, it's familiar. I, I uh, used to play a lot of sports and I got pretty hyped up and I'd have to run around during and after the, the game. Gotcha. So this is normal energy for you. Yes. Yeah. And could you honor your body for the way that it handles energy? Yes. Yeah. Could you go, oh, thank you. Perfect. Yes, I feel pretty wired. Yes. So that sense of being wired, do you resist that? Do you not like that? Or is it okay for you? I'm, I'm so used to it. And I, I walk a lot. I exercise a lot. So it's familiar to me. And, yeah. and, and I, I get excited when I watch sports now. So it's familiar. <laughs> nice. So could you allow yourself to be at peace with this experience of your body, to be wired? Yes, boy, yeah. it's strong, wow. Yes. So could you allow yourself to have that experience of being wired and still be at peace? Yes. Can you see that being at peace is actually independent of being wired? Oh, that's a good one. In other words, could you be at peace if you weren't wired? Yes. Yes, you can be at peace. If you're wired, you can be at peace if you're not wired. Yes, sometimes I'm too wired. Yes. yes. So either way, could you allow yourself to be at peace? Yes. Yes. Can you get the sense that there's a bigger part of you that can always be at peace no matter what's going on? Yes. I, yes. wish it, I wish it would speak up more often. <laughs> yes. So that, that wanting to speak up more often, can you feel that energy, that, that emotion of it wanting to be there more often? Yes. And does wanting it to be there make it be there? No. No. It's, you're really, it's funny, but you're really saying when you want it to be there, you're really sending a message out to the universe that says it's not there. You get that? Sorry, you might have to repeat that. I had an interruption. Just... Yeah. So when you, when you say, I want it to be here, you're really sending a subtle message out to the universe that it's not here. Can you see that? Yeah, well, it makes sense as far as my voice because I've been pretty quiet most of my life about a lot of things some things I probably shouldn't have been yeah so could you let go of any sense of disapproval you have about being quiet with your voice yes yes could you let go some more of this disapproving of your voice Yes. Yes. It's, that's tough because I've been hard on myself about that. Right. And does disapproving of your voice help your voice? Does it help you to speak out? No, it makes it worse. It makes it worse, right. Would it be okay with you if instead of disapproving of your voice, if you made the choice to just allow your voice to be what it is? Is that okay with you? It is, but it's hard because people have expectations and yes. they don't understand quiet. Right. They don't understand. 
And is it okay with you if you just let them live peacefully in their ignorance? And you, from your side, because you do understand that beating yourself up isn't helping, if you could just be at peace with your voice the way it is. Would that be okay with you? Yes. 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 And ask your voice if it's okay if you just be with it. Do you get an answer to that question? Yes. What's it say? It's okay. Boy, is the energy really strong. Yes, yes. You're doing a lot of healing here. So the, what I'm inviting you to do is just be with it some more. It's okay with your voice. It's as, it's as if your voice is a part of you with its own intelligence. Okay, and you're, you've been beating it like you beat a dog because you're not happy with it and that doesn't help. But the minute you start treating it with love and respect, it will start to move into alignment with you because it wants to be in alignment with you. Is it okay with you if your voice begins to move into alignment with the rest of you? Yes. Yes. And who knows what that means or how it shows up. But is it okay some more if your voice moves into alignment with you? Yes. Boy, I'm shaking pretty, pretty good here. Oh, this is really good for you. This really happy to hear about the shaking. Okay. This is energy that's been suppressed. And you've got a lifetime of not liking your voice, right? Yeah. Yep. So is it okay with you if there's a lot of energy there? Yeah. It's, a, it's there. I, it's, it sure is. I'm, yeah, this is pretty wild. <laughs> it's, yes, it's just there. Okay. So is it okay with you if instead of suppressing it, you just greet it with the vastness of your heart, the vastness of your peace, and just let it be there. Yes. 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 And let it be there some more. Ugh. Yes. There you go. Just be with it some more. And we're all here with you, holding this space for you, Brindy. Okay? You're not alone here. So could you just be with it here? Yeah. Yeah. And is, if it gets to be too much, it's okay to shut it down because you're in charge, right? But if you can, let me ask you a question, Brendy. Is it safe for you to sort of step into this energy? You don't have to, it's just a question. You're in control here. Nobody else. What's going on right now? Hello, Brindy. I'm here. I'm You're here. here. What's going on? 
I'm just thinking about some things in the past. Good. So could you let go of thinking about the things in the past and just feel the energy right now? Okay. Okay? Yes. Yeah. Because that's where the healing is taking place. And probably some of these things in the past are generating the energy as well, I would say. Right. Right. But how are you with feeling this energy? Is it okay for you if it's easy for this energy to dissolve? Yes. Yeah. Could you allow it to be even easier still? Yes. 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 And could you allow it one more time to be even easier still? Yes. And could you allow yourself to expand into your heart, into your beingness, let yourself get bigger and bigger? Does that work for you? Yes. Yes. And from this expanded place, can you see this shaking is vibrating? It's much smaller. Can you see that? Yes, and I seem to have calmed down shaking wise. Nice. Can you take that as a big victory? Yes. Yeah, so you've clearly shown to yourself that you're bigger than this energy. You're bigger than this vibration. It's just an experience within the larger part of yourself, right? Yes. And if it comes up again, is it okay if you do the same thing? You just be with it, let it go through, knowing that you're healing energy, and then just let it shift into peace. Yes. That's okay, isn't it? Yes. So are you, could you allow yourself to feel some more peace right now? Yes. Yes, and more peace. Yes. And more peace. Yes. Yes. And more peace. Yes. Yes. And even more peace. Yes. And is it okay with you if you walk through your day with this expanded sense of peace? Definitely. Yeah. And if you get knocked off, is it okay if you just come back to your center, find your rhythm, and allow that peace to show up again? Yes. It's okay, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Good. Are you okay here now? Yes, wow, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Very deep work. Okay. Miss Bobby. Namaste, team immersion. <laughs> wow. I missed two days with you guys and going so deep so fast. <laughs> I really, I'm really bowing um, to that release. I really, I really want to thank Brindy a lot for your courage. Um, you know, it's all, it's almost as if I don't have a pressing need now, or I just released so much with you, Brindy. I really want to thank you. However, if I did have a pressing need, the meditation, you know, I had, a, I had some resistance after that. Something came up to how much I effort in my life and balance when uh, you were going to the meditation of light and darkness. And then yes. this girl, I, I put my time in, and this yogi, you know, it's like a releasing and the, and the yoga, and, the, and it's, I enjoy it really, but it's like, wow, what if I didn't have to do any of that? <laughs> and then the other piece that came up, I got through that, just like listening to the mind being in the heart, but the piece that I actually kind of don't even want to talk about, so I guess this is the place to do it, is when you brought up the purpose of America. Um, my chest clenched and my mind went into Donald Trump's going to run again. Um, and, you know, if I was all loving to everybody and everything, but not that, not that picture I'm holding in my mind. Is what, so, so what, what we resist persists, huh? I guess. 
and then, and then the deeper piece was, you know, me living my life purpose in my heart, like you yes. said, and that's what that yes. and, the, and the evolution of everything else is what it is. But so, Bobby, yes, could yes. you let go of trying to figure out what your life purpose is? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I let go of that a while ago. <laughs> could you let go of trying to figure out with your mind what the purpose for America is? Oh man. Oh man, okay, can I love the judgment? Can I love the separation? Yes, yes. Yes. And the reality is you don't know. I don't know. Your mind right. doesn't know. Right. Right. Could you just let go of that mental intellectual exercise that's full of judgment? Because yeah. it's not, not helping you and not helping anybody, right? Exactly, yes. Right. Would it be okay with you if you held America in your heart? Oh, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Could you hold the world in your heart? Oh, yes. Could you let the deep wisdom of your heart be the guiding force for America and the world? Yes. Yes. Could you let that deep wisdom in your heart be the guiding force for your own life? Yes. <laughs> is, it, is there some resistance to that? My mind, my mind wanted to say something. I said, I love you too. Be quiet. We're in the heart. <laughs> Good. Good. Yes. Yes. Good. Could yes. you lo love that mind a little bit more? Yes. Yes. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's your pet dog that wants to be part of the process, right? <laughs> Could you let, let it jump up and hug it? <laughs> okay or your cat whatever i forget what you've got you've got all these pets there that's right so could you just allow it to be part of everything knowing that your heart is powerful and deep powerful and deep yes yes could you allow your heart to be even more powerful and more deep yeah yes even more so yeah, yeah. And, and as you go into your heart, you notice the expansion of peace. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Could you allow that to expand even more? Yeah. And from this place of peace, could you just once again let go of whatever vision or whatever concerns you have about the purpose of America? Yeah. Yeah. And let go whatever concerns you have about the purpose of Bobby. <laughs> yes. Yes. So could you just sit? Is it okay if you just live in this peace and come back to it whenever you need it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Namaste. Thank you so much, Bobby. And so great to see you. You look like... Well, it's Cape Cod, right? It's where you are. It's Cape May. It's the Southern Cape May. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm a lucky girl. You are lucky. <laughs> Good for you. Thank you to everybody for um, holding space for the heart today. Thanks so much, Bobby. Hello, Miss Ann. I think you're up next, and then Jean. <clears throat> Hi. Actually, I wanted to share a couple of things with you, and then um, check and see if there's still something left. Okay. Morning, it brought some stuff up years ago when you said. Um, your support system. My support system was always the other side. Um, when I was, it was back in the 60s and when I was little, my mom had electric shock therapy and they wiped her brain out so she didn't know who we were. So we didn't have a, a mom. We would, so I would rely on them. I was calling them. And they've always kind of been there. Like when I was getting a divorce, they told me it's time to let him go. And nice. Nice. When I was, my, my life is about to change. Your life is about to change. Nice. You know, I'm in moments like that. Nice. One night I had a dream and they showed me what was going to happen with the U.S., what's going on now. And I, they showed me and it scared the holy crap out of me. And I said, am I going to be all right? And he said, yes, you've done your work. Nice. And then just a few years ago, um, they came again and thank you, Stephen. 
they said that the U.S. has passed the 50% threshold of light. Uh, and I didn't know if you knew that. I did not. Yes, Thank they you. said we passed this 50% threshold of light. And that's why everything is going on that's going on right now. Nice. It's just bringing up this stuff that was always there. It's always been there. We just weren't aware of it. And now we're becoming more aware of it and we can let it go. And they said the reason it hit the 50% threshold light was because people like Lester Levinson and Larry Crane and all the teachers like you and Susanna, you guys, we see these classes and see those so few, but those few are many. Yeah. And we're all over the U.S. And because of the work you guys are doing, we made the 50% threshold of light. So thank you. What a wonderful message. Thank you so much, Anne. Oh, you're welcome. And, that's, and I think the reason I, I, I haven't taken a shower yet because I've been working all morning, I don't share this. I only shared it with close friends, but I'm sharing it because I'm stronger now. Nice. Nice. You know? So thank you. Yeah, that's a big gain, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, you're stronger now. I love that. Mm -hmm. Well, what's that worth to you to be stronger? Oh, it feels, it feels amazing. And um, because of the work, thank you, they're becoming more me. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes, more integrated. Yes, I'm not so separate and apart from them. The voices aren't. When they talk to me, it's not like it's it's something that's separate apart from me like it used to be. Yes. You know? It's a big gain in itself. It's yeah. a huge gain. Is it okay with you, Anne, if you start to merge, not just more completely with these voices, but with all of creation? Yes. That's yes. okay, isn't it? Yes, I've let go of a lot of resistance, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. could you let go of even more resistance and allow yourself to merge through love with all of creation? Yes. 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 Is it okay with you if you move into oneness with all of creation? Yes. 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 And it's okay... Is it okay with you that you merge and it becomes a living reality that you are one with everything? And all the while you still have this unique sense of individuality. Yes, yes. So yes. That's okay, isn't it? Yes, yes. So that's the direction. My encouragement to you would be to keep allowing yourself to set that intention. Okay. Yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. So I'll tell you my story here mm -hmm. is that at a certain point in all the releasing that I was doing, I stopped saying, oh, is this wanting control, wanting approval, wanting to be mm -hmm. safe? Mm -hmm. And I just made the question about wanting oneness. Mm -hmm. And could I let go of that wanting so I could move into oneness? Mm -hmm. It actually took me about two or three years mm -hmm. of that shift to where I was setting that intention, you know, numerous times a day before it actually became a legitimate full-time experience, living reality. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the, what I, the reason I'm telling you this is I don't think it's three years for you. Mm -hmm. That it's there for you. It's already started. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you can move into that much more quickly now mm -hmm. okay. there, there's moments when I'm one with everything yeah and yeah. there is separation in you or me yeah you know? I mean I, I have those moments and I, I had that moment with the mountain the other day yes and I merged with the mountain it came up again last night the energy of the mountain it showed yes. up last night and during the meditation I became one with it it became a sense of love and, and I'll say this to everyone on the phone right now, on the, on the Zoom call here. You're a lot closer than you think. Mm -hmm. And it's more easily accessible than ever before. Mm -hmm. That's sort of a restatement of Anne saying we reached the 50, over the 50% 50 
okay, that the world is shifting. More and more people are experiencing this as universal oneness. And that time is now, it's here. Mm -hmm. So do not sell yourself short. Think you're not ready for it. Who am I? That sort of thing. Just heal all that and, you know, step forward boldly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've seen that. I've, I've seen that we're all, each one of us are just one step, one release away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We all, yeah. All right, Anne. Thank you very, very much. Appreciate that. Appreciate that very much. Hello, Jean. Are you gone? Are you hanging out in the shadows? Oops. Okay. Wait. Am I here? You're here. Yes. No. <laughs> okay. So since I've never used this before, um, here's my thing. My son-in-law may have made a decision to quit his job. So it's going to be a financial burden for my daughter's family. Same uh, son-in-law I was talking about a week, week or so ago. Mm -hmm. And um, I just want to work on my daughter. And that's it. So she can make decisions she needs to make, whatever they may be. And um, she... Once again, once again, we're going to work on you instead of your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> no, it can't be me. It can be you. It has to be you. Yeah. <laughs> so well, it's always it fun to say it's somebody else, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Would it be okay with you if you allowed your daughter to live her life? Yes. Yeah. Could you allow that some more? Yes. Yeah. And could you allow yourself to love your daughter even more? Yes. Yeah. And could you love her even more? Yes. And as you love her, could you let her live her life? Yes. Could you let her learn her own lessons? Yes. Yes. And can you check to see this tendency you have as a mother? to really want to get involved in your grown children's lives. Yes. Yeah. Now that's not a bad thing. It's just that it doesn't seem to bring you a lot of peace. I don't want to repeating same mistakes. That's the thing. Yes, I get that. So could you allow them to repeat their same mistakes? Yes. Did you ever repeat your own mistakes? Plenty of times. <laughs> Plenty of times. And you're okay, right? Yes, I'm still standing. Could you, could, you, could you allow them to go through their own process of spiritual growth? Yes. Yes. And are you more helpful to them, loving them from afar, or more helpful interfering? More helpful loving from afar. Yes. And I bet if you ask them, do you want me to interfere or do you want me to stay, <laughs> stay keep my distance? I already know the answer to that. We, we all know the answer to that one, right? <laughs> so yeah. would it be okay with you if you turn this into your own process of spiritual growth? Yes. And you stop making the same mistake over and over again? Yes. <laughs> yes, that's what you're doing, isn't it? Yes, it is. It is. And we all do it. And it's helpful to have someone mirror it back to us so we, think, so we can see it. Could you, instead of worrying about your, your kids, could you let go of the worrying? Yes. And move into loving? Yes. Isn't that the way to support them is to love them? Yes, it is. Yeah. So could you give them some more love and approval? Yes. Yes. And could you pull up a picture of you giving them love and approval you letting them follow their own hearts, their own direction. Yes. And they work out things beautifully in their lives. Yes. That's a nice picture, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. Could you allow that picture to get even stronger? Yes. And what's in the way of you stepping into that picture and living it? Hmm. 
I don't have an answer for that. Okay. We don't know. So could you make up an answer? I think I need you to ask the question again. So what's keeping you from not obsessing over your children? What's keeping me from not obsessing over my children? Yeah. I guess if I just go to a place of um, love and letting go of any resistance. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm guessing that there's a pattern in there that says something like, to be a good mother, I have to really obsess like this. It's, it's a possibility. Yeah, well, if it's not showing up, I don't, I don't want to make it there. I don't know. It, it's, it's a very strong possibility because my mother never expressed herself. So I never knew how she felt. And then I found out later, you know, like, you know, talk about silent people and deep feelings. And I didn't know that. So, yes. So could, would it be okay with you if you allowed yourself to love your children without overly expressing it? Well, they know I don't, I'm not the one who's very expressive to begin with. So that's no. <laughs> okay. And then, okay, that's not the issue there then. No, so, it's not. So your, your job is this. Can you see your children as being your spiritual teachers here? Yes. Okay. Could you allow them, that every time you start thinking about them and thinking, oh, they need to do this, they need to do this, that that's your, your great wisdom telling you it's time to move into your heart, feel that energy, and just love them. Yes. Okay? <clears throat> That's the job. And, you know, no matter how many times it shows up, it's a gift to you to go into that place, and it's a gift to them. Okay? One daughter, the other daughter always says, Mom, you should have spoken up. You should have said something. Or, you know, last time I said, well, I'll just release on it. And it's like, we don't want to hear that. We <laughs> Well, and, and you're always free to speak up. And I'd say, you know, like once. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And, and do it in a loving manner. Oh, yes. And you get into a loving space and then you say it. Then it really works. Okay. When, you, when you're in there from a controlling space. Everyone resists it. Mm -hmm. So could you let go of wanting to control your kids? Yes. Could you let go of wanting to control them some more? Yes. And more? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And do that one more time. Could you let go of wanting to control your kids some more? Yes. And more? <clears throat> so you end up coughing slightly and clearing your throat as you say these things. That tells me that there's still some energy there. Okay. Okay. Could you welcome up desire to control your kids? Yes. Just be with it. <clears throat> yes. Does wanting to control your kids give you control over your kids? No, it doesn't. Doesn't. And do you really want to be responsible for your kids? No, not at all. <clears throat> no. No. So could you... Welcome up that wanting to control and just be with it with love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, be with it with love some more. Is it okay with you? This comes up, you just love it some more. Yes. Yeah, and love it some more. Yes. And as you sit there and love this feeling, what's your inner experience? I'm not sure. <clears throat> okay. Do you feel? I was, I was starting to feel a little heady. I'm not sure how to describe my feeling. It was something in my head. It was feeling like really lightheaded or. Good. So can you put your attention into your heart? Yes. Yeah. Just breathe into your heart. And ask your heart if it's okay to welcome up and love this wanting to control. Yes. Heart says it's fine, doesn't it? Yes. Is it okay with you if you let your heart 
direct your life here. Yes. Yes. So every time this desire comes up, could you just go into your heart like this again and honor the wisdom of your heart? Yes. Yeah. And check to see, pull up a situation where you want to, you know, like, what do you want to tell your daughter right now? That everything will be okay and she'll be able to find the answers and she knows she can get my support anytime she needs it. <clears throat> so could you go into your heart mm -hmm. and in the depth of your heart, just whisper that to your daughter. Okay. 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 And so anytime you get, feel this urge to control your kids, mm -hmm. go into your heart and whisper it in the depth of your heart. Okay. Okay. Okay, great. And that's the job. Okay. <laughs> job one, number one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Many job thanks. one. Many thanks, Jane. Good luck with that. Okay. All right. You guys, let's uh, call it a day. Two more days, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks so much, you guys. Bye.